a repairable iPhone, something that seems foreign to most third-party repair technicians. While Apple has improved the iPhone's hardware and software, they've also found ways to limit and in some cases prevent some third-party repairs. On newer phones, that includes warning messages to losses of features or functionality when certain parts are replaced. Apple did launch a self-repair program in response to the outcry from those who wanted the right to repair their devices. But this didn't fix the major issues of the manufacturer's control on repair, but only provided another way to pay Apple for a repair. As even replacement parts purchased from their store didn't function correctly and displayed warning messages until a support officer ran configuration software, meaning the repairability of these newer iPhones is still heavily controlled. But it hasn't always been like this, because Apple has made some repairable phones. The best examples being the iPhone 3G and 3GS, released in 2008 and 2009 respectively. But what's so special about these two early iPhone models that makes them so much more repairable compared against the new ones? Well, let's take a look. Once I remove the grime from the bottom screws, you'll see that these are not pentalobe security screws, but regular old Phillips. The pentalobe screw didn't reach the iPhone to the iPhone 4 in an early production change shortly after launch. Water resistance also wasn't a thing for iPhones at this time, so lifting the screen out of place requires no heat or prying. Just a pull with a suction cup. But inside is the biggest shock. Each flex cable is labelled. Although probably only meant for Apple's genius bar technicians, it still highlights what connectors need to be detached without the need for any manual. I'll disconnect cables 1, 2, and 3 before removing the display assembly. With the display removed, we can see an unobstructed view of the internals. But before progressing here, we'll turn our attention to the display. This iPhone yet again has another repair advantage over newer models. Instead of replacing the whole screen when damaged, as you would today, the iPhone 3G and 3GS can have their LCD and digitizer separated by unfastening six Phillips screws, some of which were hidden under some plastic tape. But still, this is some Fairphone level stuff. With such modularity, a cracked screen can be fixed by only replacing the glass, which would have likely saved you quite a bit of money back in the day. This means the LCD has a small air gap between the glass, a process still used in Apple's cheapest iPad model. Most probably don't even realize the gap, but would notice a several hundred dollar cheaper screen replacement when compared to other iPad models. Would you trade a few millimeters for this feature? You may have noticed that inside we can't see a battery. That's because it's hidden under the logic board, one of this phone's only pitfalls. You do have to remove the logic board to access it, but with only eight Phillips screws, it can be accessed in a very short time. That being said, they did also put a do not remove sticker over one of the screws, hiding it which is not ideal. The bigger issue is expanding batteries. While this particular one hasn't expanded, it's not unheard of. And because of its location in the phone, if it were to expand, it would crack the back housing, push up on the logic board and the display, causing permanent damage to the phone in some extreme cases. But with the motherboard removed, we can get a closer look, packing a Samsung processor running at 412 megahertz with 128 megs of RAM this iPhone 3G is probably less powerful than some modern IoT smart fridge. The last item we'll be removing is the charge port. Only three screws hold it in place compared to about 20 in recent iPhone models. What's left is the buttons, headphone jack, vibration motor, and the glued in battery. Some things never change. With that, the iPhone 3G is disassembled, being almost identical to the 3GS inside and out. Just look at how few screws and pieces there are. You can forget about pentalobal tri-wing because there's not a single security screw. In fact, there was only Phillips. Still a few different sizes, but with less screws overall, it's easier to manage. Now it's time I reassemble the phone, which is as easy as it sounds. It's amazing how people once found these phones hard to repair, especially as the battery wasn't removable like in basically every other device at the time. Love it or hate it, the iPhone really pioneered a lot about smartphones, both good and bad. In 15 years, phones have only gotten harder to repair, mostly by design to ensure returning business for the companies that manufacture them. 
With the display reassembled, it can be attached to the logic board through its three flex cables. After which, the display can be folded down and clipped into place before fastening the two Phillips screws at the bottom. And we're done. So this is it, a teardown and repair assessment on Apple's most repairable smartphone, with features not even the pro repair phones of today have, such as the ability to separate the glass from the LCD. This video isn't to suggest you should downgrade to a phone from 2008, but instead show you what we've lost over the last 15 years. If you haven't already seen a teardown and repair assessment on a recent iPhone model, I do suggest watching one. But what the iPhone 3G and 3GS don't have is software that limits replacement parts from working correctly, security screws, or even a rear glass with adhesive so strong a laser is needed to burn away the adhesive. The 3G also allows you to install any version of iOS unlike the 3GS and newer, giving you better control of your device. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and checking out the Teardown and Repair Assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.